Hey guys, Michael here from michaelsherlock.com. I'm here with Snow Leopard, Apple's new operating system, version number 10.6, the evolutionary upgrade to, Sn to Leopard. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the new features. There will be a corresponding blog post on michaelsherlock.com that has some more features. A lot of the features that I'm going to show you in this video are ones that I can graphically illustrate. The additions that will be on the corresponding blog post will be some additions that I could show you but didn't fit into this video, as well as some improvements and upgrades that they've added that I can't really demonstrate on video. A lot of improvements on the back end, if you will. So let's start this off with the new media player that ships with uh, Snow Leopard, QuickTime 10. Go ahead and launch it and it has a new icon as you can see so when you start it up it actually gives you some cool new options for capturing your thoughts so if you go to file you can do movie or audio recordings and movie recordings i.e. things that will capture your eyesight let's say hey um, those were available in QuickTime 7 but you needed to pay for the pro version. This is the free version of QuickTime 10, the one that ships. And if you uh, click that little nugget right there, you can change your camera, change your mic, change quality, all that. We'll go ahead and close that. But you can also do screen recordings as well, which is really cool. Instead of using maybe ScreenFlow or whatever option you have, you're good to go without that. Let's go to the Finder real quick. I want to bring up a movie here. This is Snow Leopard Upgrade video that I showed you. So you can do full screen. And you can also zoom in even more if you want. What's cool is uh, the new controls are different. It looks a little bit more streamlined. But if you go to the Share interface, you can actually share with iTunes, or what's really cool now, Mobile Me Gallery or YouTube. So directly from Snow Leopard's QuickTime 10, you can upgrade, you can upload a video that you've captured. Let's say you recorded a screen capture, and you did the editing you needed by trimming, which is supported here, similar to the way the iPhone 3GS does it. You just drag and press trim. So after you, pretty much QuickTime now, is an interface that allows you to make really easy and simple videos. You can capture and trim the ends off of your videos and then upload them directly to uh, YouTube or MobileMe. So QuickTime 10 is a really nice improvement. Now, here's a Firefox window. It's minimized to the dock. Some people don't like that. So what you can do is if you go to System Preferences and Dock, you can minimize windows into Application icon. So I click that. Let me show you what that does. Now when I minimize Firefox, it shoots over to the Firefox window. I can minimize this version as well. Bam. And then how do I get it? Now it doesn't necessarily give you some sort of representation here, but if you right click, you have all your windows available as well as options so you can keep in dock all that. So let's say you wanted to grab that back. You can go ahead and grab it back. And it's just really another way to save some room in your dock. Let's say you don't want to have, you know, five windows of Firefox cluttering up your dock. Well, now you can have it still minimized so you don't lose screen real estate, but it's not blocking your dock with all these windows. So minimize windows into the application. Expose has been improved as well. So it's now in a sort of a grid. So here are your different, here's the grid basically instead of just being cluttered. And down here you can sort of see a little line. Here are your minimized application windows that are also present in Expose, which is really nice. But there's also sorting. So if you press Command 1, that'll sort your applications in alphabetical order. If you press Command 2, that'll sort them by application. So that's a really cool improvement as well the ability to get some more power in Expose. There's some more features in Expose now that involve the dock. So if you click and hold on the dock application, you have all the, or the dock icon, you have all the applications that are currently open, all of instances. And this doesn't just work in Firefox, it, but it works in 
many different, pretty much every, every app application, let me just be specific there. So it, it works really nicely, doc expose. Like I said, with regular expose, minimize applications are down here. This makes it really useful. Let's say you're dragging an application, you downloaded a DMG file, or you download the application, from, and from your downloads folder, you need to move it into your finder so you just would hover over your finder it would open up all instances of finder and then you can move it right into applications it's just really easy and the uses of these new expose things are infinite stacks has also been improved so let's look at the let's say desktop files here uh so now not illustrated here but it's now scrollable so once you reach a certain level of content inside the stack inside the grid instead of making everything smaller it's gonna allow you to scroll up and down but also now you have a lot more uh, options in the desktop file so if you press on a folder it opens the folder you can go back up in the structure let's say you want to go to pictures you want to keep and then you finally get the picture you want you can open it up in preview or whatever the corresponding application for the thing you chose so improves stacks let me uh, open up a new instance of text edit and then I'll just demonstrate that one more time so they've added some improvements in terms of text substitutions so if you do parenthesis C parenthesis that will give it a second hmm, didn't work that time but let's say you do parenthesis C parenthesis and start typing it's supposed to give you the copyright sign and eventually it does it just takes a second I guess the first time there's the same thing in parenthesis R it'll give you the reserve sign if you give it one second it does take some time there you go and uh, fractions work as well so you can do one half and if you just give that a second again it's going to change come on Come on. It should start to change. There we go. It just takes a second, which is kind of irritating. But if you go to System Preferences, and we showed you that, so let me just take that off. Uh, if you go to System Preferences, Language and Text, you can actually go to Text, and you have your substitutions here. By pressing the plus button, you can add substitutions. So let's say you wanted to type MS, and every time you typed MS, you wanted it to change to your Michael Sherlock or whatever your name is. You could apply it for whatever you want. That would make this text substitutions really easy and just speed up productivity. Now keep in mind this works in Cocoa apps and Carbon apps that are sponsored by the developer only. So not all applications will work, but Cocoa apps work out of the box and Carbon apps can get this feature down the road if the developer supports it. I also want to talk about services for a second. So you remember that your Mac can talk, right? If you go file or text edit services, you have different services here. Uh, Mac, I guess Mac can talk is kind of silly, but it's still you still have that. Mac can talk. Uh, my speakers are off, <laughs> so that uh, Mac your Mac can still talk. But from services, as you can see, there are different services in your text edit than there are in Firefox. There's no services that apply. So if you remember back in Leopard, there used to be all the services and they were just unselectable. Now they won't even show you. So it kind of kills some of the clutter and is something that's really, really cool. The last thing I want to mention before I go today is the smaller footprint of Snow Leopard. Now take this with a grain of salt. Apple says you can lose up to seven gigabytes. I lost 14.78 gigabytes. But apparently Apple has also changed the number system that Snow Leopard uses. So instead of being, I, I think it used to be base 10, or it used to be base 2, I think, and now it's base 10. So it's a little bit deceiving. It is a lighter install, but as you can see, originally I was super psyched that it was 14.78 gigabytes free, but it has to do with number system, so it's kind of deceiving in that regard. So I'm Michael Sherlock from youtube.com slash the revived one and michaelsherlock.com, the blog, 